The word of the day today is fiasco. Every time I say the word fiasco, you get 10 points. Okay, so a whole bunch more information came out about the Jane's addiction situation and the drama is a lot more dramatic than we could have ever predicted, okay? A lot of stuff happened in the backstage area that shed some light onto what happened in that viral clip where Perry Farrell is seen body checking and punching his guitarist Dave Navarro. We're gonna spelunk through the caves of this drama, but before we do, hi, hello, welcome, my name is Dan, and I like to make old-fashioned YouTube videos here on the internet. And if you comment on it within the first three hours of it going online, I will reply. And that's a semi-guarantee. Okay, so let's talk about all this new information that came out on the Rare Form radio show hosted by the guitar tech of Jane's Addiction, Dan Cleary. So this is Jane's Addiction's guitar tech, and he's on this show with Dave Navarro's best friend of like 40 years, Todd Newman. Not only did Dan Cleary see this stuff go on from the side stage, but he was responsible for breaking up the fight between the two band members. Well, I guess the two former band members now. If you're somehow not familiar with this drama, I'll bring you up to speed really quickly here. Jane's Addiction, they're a very famous band that started all the way back in the 80s. They have a very turbulent history where they get together, they break up, they have to go to rehab, all this sort of stuff. This year, they got back together, they recorded, and were gonna put out new music, they went on tour, and everything was going swimmingly. Dave Navarro, the iconic guitar player of the band, was finally healthy enough to rejoin the band, and everybody thought that this was gonna be such a magical time for Jane's Addiction fans. And the first chunk of the tour in Europe went smooth as could be. Everything was great. Perry Farrell was clocking in excellent performances. The band was as tight as ever. But things started to kind of hit the fan when they came back to the States. They had a couple rocky shows through August, and then it all culminated with the viral clip that we're all familiar with, where Perry Farrell goes up and body checks and attempts to punch his bandmate, Dave Navarro. And in today's video, we have footage. The isolated vocal track of Perry Farrell from that moment. The instance before he went over and tried to punch Dave Navarro. And not only do we have that amazing clip, we also have all of Dan Cleary's accounts of the event. So after that viral clip happened in Boston, the band ended up having to kind of, I don't know, cancel the tour. So they canceled the rest of the tour. They could no longer coexist out there on the road, obviously. Days later, Perry's wife, Eddie, who is a very permanent fixture in this story, comes out with this kind of optics piece where she's trying to get ahead of the story and kind of twist things. But then after that, Perry comes out and apologizes. And it's very clear that there's a lot of murky stuff going on behind the scenes. At the time, the Farrell family said that it was a sound issue. Things were just too loud. People couldn't hear Perry Farrell. And then he just got to a boiling point. And Dan Cleary is like, well, that's that's not the case. The issues actually started well before that. Dan goes on to say that when the band got together, they agreed that all decisions would be kind of like a democracy type thing. Or even if one person disagreed with it, they weren't going to do it. And Perry Farrell kind of put the presentation of the live show above everything else. And all that really means is that he wants scantily clad women dancing on stage. And the rest of the band are like, nah, we don't really want to do that. They didn't have the dancers in Europe and everything was fine. Everything was great. The band just went out there as the band, played as the band. It was a great time to be alive, okay? But they come back to the States and now Perry Farrell is all like, I need dancers on stage. And not only do I need dancers on stage, one of those dancers is my wife, Eddie. So it's like, okay, I see where you're coming from, Perry Farrell. Mr. I have my own locker room. Mr. I don't associate with the band ever. I don't show up to practices. I don't show up to sound check. You just want to get your wife involved in the show. So it's like the Perry Farrell experience or whatever. So the band's like, no, we're not really okay with that. So Perry Farrell takes it upon himself to go out to the desert to film these scantily clad women dancing in the desert somewhere, brings that footage back to the band, and is like, this is the footage that we're gonna play during our set. And normally these kind of like tech issues are brought up months in advance of the show going out, months in advance of the tour, 
happening. But no, Perry Farrell's like, no, I got these women dancing in the desert on film right now, and I want this projected on stage, on screen, right now, while we're doing our thing. And the band's like, god damn, this is like crunch time. You can't be doing this, Perry Farrell. And this is all happening on night one in the venue as fans are coming into the venue. That's how last minute this is. And the band's like, no, we can't do it. We don't have time to do it. And this is the part that most people don't know. On night one of their US leg, Perry Farrell actually quit the band. He was like, no, no, I'm going back to my hotel. I can't believe you guys don't want me to have my naked women on stage. I can't believe you guys won't let me have my desert footage playing on stage. I'm quitting, I'm leaving, there's no way I'm doing this. And I was like, oh my God, what are we gonna do now? All this money, all these people's jobs, all these people coming to a show, we're out here right now, literally in the venue, and our lead singer, Perry Farrell, is kicking up a fit, and he's gonna what? Go home? Go go where? What's he gonna do? What, what? No, that can't be the thing. So everybody's on the phone. Hey, what are we gonna do? Hey, what are we gonna do? We gotta find something to do. Because the band is like, we're, we're gonna go play, kinda no matter what. We're not gonna let all these people down, blah, 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 blah. They end up talking Perry Farrell off the, off the ledge or whatever. He's like, okay, I guess I'm gonna play. And they have a banger show. They just go out there and kill it. They kick so much ass, apparently, now on that first night of the show. I think it's in Las Vegas. But even though it's the first show of the tour, a lot of drama just happened and tensions are gonna be high going forward. They go on to have a couple rocky shows here or there, but there's a famous final three shows that happened before the Boston fiasco. One in Florida that is panned and scathingly criticized by the critics of the area. There's a New York show after that that totally bombs. Apparently, Perry Farrell is like ahead of the rest of the band members, or he's behind of the rest of the band members. And while Perry Farrell is off in his own little land, the band members have to do this kind of like huddle while they're playing the song on stage in front of a bunch of people and being like, okay, where's Perry in this song? How are we gonna end up getting to the spot that he's at in the song? Okay, and then they would just like adjust, call an audible on the fly. Sometimes it would work, and sometimes Dan says that it was a train wreck. And after this total annihilation of a show in New York, the band has this total blowout backstage. Apparently it's a very vicious fight between these guys. But by the end of their heated argument, apparently they were all back on the same page, hugging and agreeing to kick so much ass the next night back in New York. And this next night is gonna be 9-11, a New York show on September 11th. These guys need to go out there and kick ass. And apparently, they did that. They went out there and had a hell of a show on 9-11 in New York. Then, the next show is the Boston show. And apparently, the way that Perry was the first night in New York, either ahead or behind, kind of stumbling, kind of seeing right through you, maybe on like a substance or two kind of thing, well, he was kind of having that kind of night again in Boston. So while he was ahead or behind in the song or whatever, and the band did one of those huddles around the drum kit to kind of figure out how to catch up to Perry Farrell, Perry saw this out of the corner of his eye and got paranoid and angry and started huffing and puffing. And then you saw how that all culminated in that viral clip. And they're going on about it's a sound issue. It's a sound issue. It's like, no, it's not a sound issue, Perry Farrell. That's a cope. You have some of the best sound guys working for you. You have some of the best in-ear monitors that money can buy with a personalized mix in everybody's monitor. There's no way it's a sound issue. You're lying. It's either that or you're holding the microphone out here. No wonder people can't hear you, Perry Farrell. Get it together, buddy. But he's so far gone, and it's apparent at this point that it's like not a silly, ha-ha, this guy's a train wreck type moment. It's like, this is sad, this guy has serious problems, and it's all culminating with his friends and family on stage in real time. And before this Boston incident in New York, apparently, Perry Farrell goes up to Dave and tells Dave that he's just taking too long after the set. And Dave's like, well, what do you mean I'm I'm taking too long? You mean I'm I'm giving picks to the, the fans, I'm getting the set list, I'm doing some hugs. And Perry's like, yeah, you're doing that. That's that's not good. That ruins the mystique 
of the band. The mystique of the band, you say? The band that's been around since like 40 years ago? The band that's been all over MTV for years and decades? MTV Cribs, Ink Master, you know? There's no more mystique, Perry Farrell. And Dave Navarro isn't typically the kind of guy to connect with the fans, so let him in his golden years out there, you know? But no, not for Perry Farrell. So all of those pressures culminated in the moment that we're all familiar with seeing. The body check, the fake kind of punched thing. But we couldn't really hear what was going on. And that is until now. We have isolated vocal tracks from that very night of Perry Farrell. And from them, you can tell A, how f***ed up he is, and B, how angry he is. Okay, Dan, take it away. You can hear the band a bit in the background. Yeah. He's in the wrong spot. Born to be more like me. Oh, shit. I'm no talking, baby, all action. No I'm talking. Wrong spot. All action. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Stop. Say it. Oh. That sounds just frustration, but yeah. check this out. Fuck these motherfuckers! The band. That's when he hits Dave, pushes Dave. Oh, that's such a cheap shot right there. Dave is looking down. What? Punch. So from that angle and with that isolated vocal track, you hear him go, these guys, these motherfuckers. Then he points at the guitar player, he goes, this guy. He points at the bass player, this guy. Then he goes over to Dave Navarro, he's like, ha, ha, like intimidating him while Dave is looking down, focusing on his shred, focusing on the solo that he's doing over there. And while he's distracted with his guitar playing, that's when Perry Farrell is the one to take the first cheap Shot. It is so clear that this guy needs help. He is beyond repair at this point. And then Dan goes on to give another exclusive in this interview, and apparently that first punch that Perry threw isn't the only punch. Backstage, Dave Navarro comes up and confronts Perry and goes, Yo, what the f*** was that? I'm never gonna play with you again. And that's a perfectly fine reaction. I think that's how I'd react, okay? I never want to see your dumbass face again. What the hell was that behavior? And then after that, apparently, Perry Farrell throws a punch that actually connects with Dave's face. And then moments after all of this happens, it goes absolutely viral. Then the next day, Etty, the wife, the dancer, comes on to her Instagram story and tries to blame all these people. She gets all these names wrong. Hey, that guy hasn't been in the crew for a whole bunch of years. What are you talking about? Hey, that's not what I do. That's not my position. You're just saying a bunch of stuff out here, just lying, just trying to get ahead of the story. But then it was clear once Perry apologized, it's like, okay, that does feel like he is sort of starting to take accountability. I think he knows that he's going to need a little bit of help right now. But at the end of the day, it's super sad. It's sad for Jane's Addiction fans. It's sad for Perry Farrell and all the members of the band. It's sad for, like, the family members and everybody that surrounds anything to do with what was going on on this tour. I don't want to speculate, but it is alluded to that there is kind of a substance abuse thing going on beyond the wine that he drinks during his set. I don't know if it's pills, I don't know if it's needles, I don't know what the extent of the substances is, but it's very clear that Perry Farrell was in a dangerous position and he was putting everybody else in a dangerous position as well. This wasn't just about his dancers and his high school film project in the desert, this goes kind of way beyond that. And when Dave Navarro's best friend asked the guitar tech what he saw in that moment, the guitar tech, Dan Cleary, said it was like watching a man turn into a werewolf. His eyes turned into a, like a different person's eyes. It was like a total like psychotic break. And all of that new information kind of does make the whole situation make a whole lot more sense. 
I linked that podcast, that interview down below, and I do recommend going and watching it and listening to it if you have a second. But I've been Dan Frampton. That's been Jane's Addiction. Go watch more content. Really appreciate it. I have a slop channel that's actually getting some views out there. Maybe you should go contribute to some of those views as well. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a good one.